Good evening, gang. It's Thursday, the 6th of July, 2017. A warm welcome along. It's an early evening show today. Well, we don't do any of these, do we? Never do an early evening show. I woke up after my... Sup now, before we start, before we start, please, please, can anyone help me with this? This will require DIY. This real will require DIY. Oh, and by the way, thank you those of you that are very kind enough to share this program on your very own walls. All right, boys and girls, thank you very much for that. Um, so here is something I had a few weeks ago, which I showed you. Uh, this is my shower control knob. OK, my shower control knob. That's what this is. And it's broken. Here, inside, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Yes, you can see it. Actually, if I hold it in a certain way... Oh, I thought you could see that then. <coughs> Just a minute. Uh, maybe if I pull that apart a bit. Can you see... There we go. Can you see it's cracked? OK? So that fits onto a spindle. And it controls the shower. Now, at this point in time, it kind of just about works. What happens when you get to the end, it then slips round. OK? Instead of stopping. Which is okay, I can cope with that. But I know at some point, it's just going to completely break. So, I have um, recently glued that together and it worked for about three weeks. And just actually, as someone said on here, I can't remember who it was, they said it's, that will break again. And indeed it has done. The gluing has, has just uh, come out. I used super glue at the time, all right? Now, yesterday... I'm in very good service, I have to say. Yesterday, oh, I haven't, got, I haven't done my cuff up there. Oh, I hate being underdressed there. Oh, I haven't got my jacket on either, have I? Never mind. Hang on a minute, let me do this up, because it's going to just flap around and do my blooming head in. Don't get this on the news, do you? You know, when old Hugh, is it Huey Lewis? What's his name? Hugh Evans? Who's the BBC bloke? BBC One, with the, the Welsh one. Is it Hugh? Hugh Lewis or Hugh, Huey... I can't remember his name now. Anyway, he's all dressed all proper, isn't he, before he comes on. Yes. So, so that's the problem. Now, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, I ordered what looked like the same one from Amazon.co.uk, and this arrived. Yes, it did look a little bit smaller, but I thought that might be the picture. Basically, they do look the same, and I thought that'd do, but unfortunately, on the back, completely different thing there. Hugh Edwards. Thank you, Matt. Oh, good morning, Matt. Good morning, Matt. Hugh. Uh, so that's a different thing. So that obviously doesn't go on. That is like a square thing. That's a round one. So that doesn't work. No problem with this. I rung them up, send it back, get a refund. Do you know what? That's 25 quid. 25 quid for that bit of plastic. Thieving people, dear. Thieves, dear. Shock him. So that's the other one. Now, I have looked high and low for this. I asked the bloke at, uh, where was it, the shower doctor. I think they're up in Glasgow, 0131. That's up Glasgow, isn't it? Or Edinburgh, one of those places. And I, I told him what I've got, and he said, oh, that shower was discontinued, uh, he said, actually, quite a number of years ago now. Now, I, I did instigate a repair on it myself, actually. Um, about 10 years ago, I noticed it was leaking. And at that point, I was able to order a rubber washer thing. It was ever so simple. I just changed this washer, and it stopped dripping. So this is the latest thing to have gone wrong. Is there, could I put like some sort of clip? Now, it would have to be very thin. And I'm sure I've seen thin circular clips that are almost spring loaded that I could push over it to hold the two bits of plastic together. OK, um, if I glue it again and I use super glue, I think it will just go again. It'll probably just go again unless I try a different type of glue. So I could try that. Or is there some sort of spring thing that I could put over it to hold it together? Now, what I could do is glue the whole thing onto the shower. Now, that would work. I'm pretty sure that would work. That would involve, you know, gluing all the inside of the hole, right? And then pushing it on the spindle and then leaving it. I'm sure that would work. But the next time it goes wrong, that's it. You know, going to have to get a new shower. On the other hand, this particular shower has got to be about 20 years old now, to be honest. So what do you think? <clears throat> it may be, if I can't find some sort of clip, if I, it, it may be 
that yes, why not? Just glue it on, leave it like that. It'll work for, I don't know, six months, 10 years. You don't know. And then the next time it goes wrong, time for a new shower. What do you reckon? Your, 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 um, your thoughts with that one, please. I would rather repair this, you see. I would rather repair this with some sort of clip or maybe, maybe if I got glue and then put it in some, and put a bit of, t I wonder if, ga actually, gaffer tape. Now, I've always said to you, gaffer tape fixes everything, but that might catch as it goes around on the spindle, the gaffer tape. It's got to be a thin piece of metal, like a clip or some sort. So your thoughts on that, please. Or shall I just glue it straight onto the spindle? That will work, because the spindle's big. So you put a lot of glue on there, that's not going to break again, I don't think. In fact, it won't break until the shower breaks down, and then I'll need a new one anyway. So what do you think of that, boys and girls? I would, I would, I would love your thoughts on that. Uh, there's a phone line open as well this evening. If you want to call in about that, perhaps we have a plan or two, listen. I don't know if Adam, Adam the plumber's with us tonight. Uh, it's 020-8144-3477 if you want to call in tonight, OK? 020-8144-3477. If you don't want to, that's fine as well. I've got loads to chat about today because I've been here since Monday. Have I? Oh, why has that got hot a minute? Hang on a minute. Let me just turn that. It's got a bit hot in there. Um, I haven't been here since Monday. I've been ever so busy, ever so busy. Let's say hello to our early birds who are with us uh, on the show tonight. Hello to Dean. Greetings, Dean. Joe is there. Hello, Joey. Thank you for sharing the uh, the programme on your wall as well. It's always much appreciated. Oh, Joe is calling in. Look at that. Joe is calling in. Let's go to line 278. Good morning. Good evening, Joey. How are you? Good evening. How lovely to hear your little voice. Ah, it is. <clears throat> and you? I've been away for a few days. What's up, my friend? No, I was just watching your video. Well, you might as well just get a new um, knob. Well, I can't find a new knob. We can't find it anywhere. Can't really? find one. No, it's been discontinued apparently some years ago. Quite a quite a few years ago, it was completely discontinued. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I I ordered one as you probably saw. I ordered a new one, uh, but it 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 it's the wrong one. Um, oh. Basically, oh, my shop. My shower is a New Team 1000, and the knob I ordered was for a New Team 1000 XT or something oh, like no. that. Oh, no. There's no problem. I, I can send it back and there could be a refund on that. But I can't find one of these anywhere. I've checked eBay everywhere. I've spent ages on the phone looking. Might Would as you... well get a new shower then. Yeah, but that's like 150, 200 quid, isn't it, dear? Whoa! Whoa! We can't be spending... Why has this got hot in here? Why we can't be spending money unnecessarily? Have you gone mad? Eh? Of course you can. No, we can't. We must try <laughs> and repair. We must try and repair. <laughs> yeah. Like you say, just use gaffer tape, you know, it fixes everything. Well, I'm thinking if I glue it again, but right. this time tightly put a very thin piece of gaffer tape around it. That might work. I mean, it's not going to work forever, but it might work, you know. Yeah. I might try that. And there's other people sending in their suggestions, which I'll have a read through. Yeah. All right? Okay, okay. Thank try you for your... Does it work? If not, then... Oh. Th thank you for your kind suggestion. All right, Joey? And you. Yeah. Lots yeah, of love I'll to your missus. Tell her now. Joey. Bye, Joey. There we are, Joey calling in with his assistance there. Thank you, Joey. It's much appreciated. Good morning to Gustav, who says, we've missed you. I've missed you as well. I've been busy, but so much has been going on, really. Um, just normal things. There's nothing of great interest, actually. Uh, Elaine's there in Israel. Greetings, Elaine. Hope you're well, darling. Beautiful Elaine is there. Uh, Kevin Webster's there. Hello, Kevin. Rod Brown. Greetings, Gr Rod. Uh, Carl. Hello, Carl. Not working tonight, sir. I thought you were a bit like me when I was a few years ago um, working every single night of the week. Cool, I didn't know if you used to rush around, Carl. I think as you get older, I've got older now. I know I've got older now. And I'm very, very happy with my two nights off next year. Uh, I want three nights off from next year and gradually do it like that rather than cut it off altogether. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I enjoy every single job I do at the moment. I really do. I love the jobs I do. You remember, I mean, I told you months and months ago, I really wasn't happy on the Thursday night. So when they, when, when I got rid of that because of the, the three o'clock finish there, I was so much, I'm so much happier now. Not having to go out till two o'clock in the morning. I really am. Greetings, Carl. Uh, Matt says, I thought it was July. Well, it says July up there. Oh, do you mean the, well, that was the opening, that was the countdown, Matt. That wasn't the correct date there. Very, very well spotted, though. No, that was just the countdown. You know, little videos of things that have happened in the past, all right? 
Uh, hello to Wendy. Wendy's with us today as well. Greetings, Wendy. Eloise is there. Hello, Eloise. You're right, sweetheart. Lovely, Eloise. Um, let me see who else. Uh, Mark Kempner. Hello, Mark. What are you doing for Pride? Nothing. Just my normal nights. Uh, Friday, tomorrow night, I'll be hosting karaoke. At, oh, that's the other thing. With two nights off, I have to tell you. With two nights off now, the week goes even faster than it did before. Yeah, and it's great. You're like, so I work Monday, then I have Tuesday off. Then I work Wednesday, only only for a couple of hours, really. Although the, the journey in is a bar, uh, sorry, the journey in is a nightmare at the moment. This is all nights. I don't know why. You remember I told you a few weeks ago, it's now taking almost every time two hours to get to work. Don't know why. Don't know why. Just sheer weight of traffic. It now takes nearly two hours every single night to get to work on, certainly on Monday, Wednesday and Friday and Sunday and Sunday as well. I, for, for Sunday, I leave at uh, half past five. I leave here at half past five to start at eight o'clock. Don't know why. Just just one of those things, you know. Hmm. Uh, so, yes, Mark, I'll be doing a karaoke at Central Station on Friday night. That's 8.30 till midnight. And also hosting the cabaret Saturday night at Central Station, which you'll be very pleased to know is Miss Jason, who I just absolutely adore. Fantastic cabaret artist. Miss Jason on Saturday night this week at Central Station. All right. Hello, Diane. Greetings, Diane. Sorry I haven't been with you for a while. I've been very, very busy this weekend. Uh, Alan says, Shalom, Shalom, my friend, Shalom, my friend, Shalom, Shalom. Da, 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 Is that the right word? Is that the right music? <laughs> Might have picked up and nicked a tune from something else, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Um, Rod reckons it's it's not the ideal situation, but a good glue is called Adam's. It's. I don't think you fin finished a sentence there. <laughs> Hello to Adam the plumber. You haven't got one of these, Adam, have you? Eh? This is for a new team 1000. I can't find a new one to buy anywhere. So I'm going to have to either repair that or stick it onto the spindle. I wonder what Adam's going to think of that. Yeah, hopefully he'll answer in a minute. Um, hello to James Everton. You need a glue gun. I I've got one of those. I've got a glue gun. But it tends to... The glue gun... Is, is too thick, you know, it's too much glue comes out of a glue gun. Unless, of course, I'm sticking it onto the spindle there. Water repellent glue. Yeah, we're we'll waiting for Adam. Uh, with the shower, look on eBay. And so I've had, a, I've looked on eBay, Adam. I've looked everywhere, everywhere for one of these things. I've spent some time doing this. I've got a few things, a couple of things gone wrong this week, which we're trying to sort out. Um, Aradite. Ah, yes, Aradite. Yes. Now, Aradite, I know Aradite. That's why you mix the two things together, isn't it? Is that better than superglue, then? That's the question. Do you think it's better than superglue? Chris Lott says, chuck it out. Oh, no, Chris, dear. No, we can't be wasting things. Me, things must be repaired. There's too much of this business going on in this world, you know. Something goes, oh, let's buy a new one. No, it must be repaired, dear. Save the money. Jubilee Clips. Thank you, Gustav. Uh, I've had a look at Jubilee Clips. They're too big. If I put a Jubilee Clip around that, there's a thing sticking out the side, isn't there, What you have to screw in, and that just, it won't go back in the hole. Because as well as pushing on the spindle, it kind of, there's a, like a thing around it as well. So it's got to be a very thin piece of metal. Greetings to Jamie Clark, who joins us tonight. Greetings, Jamie. Hope you're well, sir. Uh, Paul Adamson is in Amsterdam. Thunder and lightning. Oh! oh I, I love lightning. In the same breath, I'm terrified of lightning. Absolutely terrified of lightning. If you ever want to see a good lightning storm, go to Florida in June, July. My God, you want to see the lightning there. In this country, now and again, you get a flash. There about 10 minutes passes, and then another one. In Florida, the flashes come you know, together, and they're like talking to each other. All over the sky. Absolutely terrifying, the lightning in Florida. But at the same time, fascinating as well. Chris says, use one of your favourite wire coat hangers as a shower knob hat. <laughs> There must be something that can replace this somewhere. 
The inside of it is square, Adam. It's like a square thing. Can you see? It's, there, there has to be something else I can use in place of this. I, I cannot believe out of all the knobs that, <laughs> that are out there, there isn't something that can replace that. Dear, dear me. Uh, Carl says, listening to you as I'm getting ready. Only one night off this week, Monday. Oh, Carl, that's OK. It's all right while you're young. But as you get older, you want more time off. More time off to do stupid things like this. <laughs> See, I wouldn't be able to do this if I was working all the time, would I? I'll tell you what I've been doing later. I've got loads to chat about today. I've got pages full of stuff here, if we ever get round to it. So you know what I'm like, not getting round to stuff. Uh, greetings to Wendy, says Chris. Lovely to see you back. Thank you, Wendy. It has been busy. I'll get on to that in a minute. Uh, Rod Brown says, I did the did not finish the Aradite glue. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, new team is Briston Park. Have you been in contact with Briston? No, but I've had a look at their site and this was the closest thing to it. But as I say, the bit on the back is circular and it, it just it won't go on. I did take it to the shower and put it on, but it just kind of falls into the hole. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. Jamie says, when travelling to work, you can get an annual pass, which costs £1,000 a year. It might be quicker to get to work by train. You're having a laugh, Jamie. What, with all my, my songbooks and all that? I've got all karaoke gear to... To, uh, carry around all over the place, haven't I? Wouldn't be able to do that, I'm afraid. No. Car <laughs> can you just imagine trying to take all my karaoke stuff on the train? Shoot, excuse me, can, excuse me. Can I <laughs> I'd have to book two seats for all the gear. You know, for the books and everything else. I don't generally have to carry around. One thing I don't have to carry around now is speakers. And they're uh, the heaviest thing. Except I've got a, a, a private due in a couple of weeks' time uh, that you may or may not know about. I'll show you the poster. Um, here it is. Uh, this is a, a fundraiser we're doing. It's in Woking. Uh, so if you're in the Woking area in about, is it about three weeks time now, isn't it? Hang on. What's the, what's the date today? Six. So one, two, three. In four weeks time, okay. Four weeks time, we're doing this karaoke night in support of the Barry Manilow uh, Music Project, uh, Cancer Research and the Dogs Trust. It's on Saturday the 29th of July from eight o'clock at night. Uh, and it's at the Fox and Flower Pot at the Goldsworth Park Centre in Woking in Surrey. I gather the bus goes right past there, and it's very close to the train station as well. So if you want to come along to that one, uh, that's in uh, Woking. But that one, of course, I need speakers for. I have to take speakers and my complete setup if you're ever around uh, that way. OK. <coughs> <coughs> Alan says, uh, I love your shirt. Thank you, Alan. I don't have any new clothes, actually, at the moment. Everything you see me wear is at least a year old. This is probably about five or six years old. Yeah. I mean, I used to be a one to buy all cheap stuff, but um, it's my mate Ron who got me onto the more sort of, uh, I suppose, mid-range stuff. And I would have paid about 50 or 60 quid for this one shirt, which to me is outrageous. But, you know, five, actually it's probably about eight years old. Eight years down the line, it still looks look reasonably new, isn't it? If you iron it. Although I don't do any ironing. Oh, no, I can't be bothered doing ironing. No, thank you very much. A lady, a lady does my ironing. She has an old black bag for 10 quid. It's not bad, is it, eh? Don't forget, you can call in if you want to. 0208 is my local London number. 020-8144-3477, right? Welcome along to the show. If you're just joining us, and once again, thank you to those of you who are sharing the show on your wall. It's very, very kind of you. So, that's the shower thing. I'll go out and... Um, what about Gorilla Glue? I've heard Gorilla Glue. Or is Aradite the best thing? I'm not quite sure. Would Aradite be the best thing? Aradite? I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Um, OK, so uh, I have been very tired the last couple of days. And the reason for that is I popped down the doctor on Wednesday, <clears throat> Wednesday morning, because I've got a very dry back of the throat. Now, it's right at the back. It keeps feeling like it's dry all the time. And I've had this for about two or three weeks. now. So I went to the doctor and... It's basically given me some antihistamine. He had a look down there. Nothing to be seen. A little torch. Was it, actually, it was a lady. She had been there two days. Ever so nice. Lovely lady. She said the head scarf. Well, ever so nice she was. Only young. I've noticed this as well. As you get older, like doctors and <laughs> policemen, they're like 20 years younger than you. 
How weird is that? It's very, very strange. Very strange indeed. So she's given me some antihistamine. So I took one. Usually when I go to the doctors, if they give me some sort of tablet, I'll, I'll take one immediately. I get home. So uh, I, I, it was um, uh, dropped them down to the um, chemist, came back home, had some dinner, went back to the chemist, picked them up, had one immediately. Uh, and Wednesday night, so Wednesday, what time would that have been? I don't know, about two or something. One. And I, 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 shortly after, within a couple of hours, I got really, really tired. So I went to bed. And the same thing has happened today, Thursday. Um, I had one almost as soon as I got up. So I went about my day, which I'll tell you about my days in a minute. And then uh, I went swimming in the afternoon. Right about, we went swimming this morning about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Come back home, had some lunch, and I got incredibly tired again. You know, like, oh, I didn't feel I was quite with it. Anyway, I read the box, and of course it said it makes you drowsy. So it must, it's got to be that, which is why I wasn't here. I was going to do one this afternoon. Um, Tuesday night, I didn't have time to do a show at all. So I think it must be that. Must be the antihistamine pills that are doing it. Uh, hello to uh, Ben. Greetings, Ben. Welcome, Ben. Welcome, bruv. Bruv? Bruv, dear. Bruv. <laughs> <laughs> bruv or is that a young term is it do i i need to get with it with these times uh, is this better if i do it like this bruv have i got to do something with me hands as well like bruv does that work <laughs> ben you talk another lang you all talk another language now anyone who's under 25 years old completely talks another language greetings ben welcome to the show hello to tony power shania uh, has a live Speedway broadcast. Oh, there won't be anyone listening here. Well, then, will there? They'll all be watching your broadcast tonight or, or listening to your live Speedway broadcast. Why, why, quite frankly, I can't think of anything more boring than watching cars going round and round. That's all they do. Round and round they go, don't they? How boring is Speedway racing? <laughs> why do people... Pay fortunes to go and see F1 going round. That's all they do. Boring. Anyway, have a good broadcast, Shania. Hope you watch the show a bit later on. Uh, Wendy says you can get non-drowsy antihistamine. Yes. Yeah, I do know that, actually. Um, so why did the doctor give me that one, I wonder? I don't know. And the other thing is, <coughs> these antihistamine tablets are pennies. I mean, literally, they're like 50 pence in Audi, aren't they, for a box of them. And I can't understand why she gave me a box. You know, it, how much does that box of antihistamine tablets just cost the NHS? Was the, was the thought I went through my mind once I come back from the chemist. I know, I know that some people can't afford the 50 pence. Why didn't she say to me, you know, you can get them for 45 pence or I can give you a prescription? At which point I would have said, that's OK, I'll go and buy them for 45 pence. Or whatever they are. You know, and I do know they have got the non-drowsy ones there. So I might try and get those. Or oh, I was talking to a lady at the quiz night last night about this. Uh, because I got I got tired at the quiz last night. Oh, really, about halfway through the quiz. So I do a quiz night on Wednesdays at the King's Head Theatre Bar. And um, I got tired through the quiz. And I was tired on the way home. I got back here and I think I... I meet, did I have anything to eat before I went to bed? Yeah, I did. I did, actually. Yeah, because I'd done a stew, didn't I? In the slow cooker. So I had something to eat before I went to bed. But I was incredibly tired when I was coming home from uh, uh, school, uh, the quiz night last night. I really was. Um, phone number 020-8144-3477 is my phone number. Rod wants to know. 020-8144-3477. Uh, greetings to Tom Harris, who said Chris is on fleek. <laughs> Oh, if you'd have seen me this afternoon, I went, oh, God, hello, good morning. Good. There was no life in me at all, but I've had a sleep since then, you see. So there we are. Um, so let's have a look there. Uh, we did uh, yesterday at the quiz, uh, quiz quiet last night again. We only had about four teams there last night, uh, which was a shame because they were giving that free beer. They were doing a free beer tasting yesterday and people were going away with bottles of beer from... The Southwark Brewing Company it was. I think it was the Southwark Brewing Company. Let's take a call. Hello, Adam. Greetings. Good evening, Chris Reardon. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm quite awake now, actually. The antihistamine oh, thing, I'm going to have to change those because they're just sending me to sleep, mate. <laughs> I bet. 
Um, I'm phoning up about your um, your control knob. Ah, my control knob for my new team 1000. Yes, what do you reckon I should do? Well, <laughs> if I, re I reckon if you contract Bristol, they might do a conversion kit that um, where they do a, uh, a, a square shank that will fit into the round, you know, in a conversion one. Oh, right, okay. They might do a converter or something that can be fitted into, or, you know, with the new knob. They okay. They might do a, a round with a, a square edge or something. I'll give them a ring tomorrow then. I did speak to the shower doctor today. Is it Glasgow they are? Do you know I'm them? Not, I've not heard of them. I've been sort of looking up <laughs> online quickly for you. As you said, the XT is quite popular. Yes. Um, I don't know if you would... You possibly might have to just change the control knot. Uh, the con uh, the um, what do you call it? The thermostat, the bit that goes in the centre. You know the, the actual. Because presumably it's one of these with two pipes that comes out, and you've got one pipe that goes up to the shower. Is it something like that? Oh, I don't know. I I only look at the box. <laughs> Is it a that, square box in the shower hose? Yes, it's a square it? box. It's a mixer shower. It doesn't heat the water. It's a power shower. It's a power. It's an electric power shower. Yes. Is it? I think it sucks the, sucks the water out of the tank, doesn't it? Um, it depends. It's, they're normally mains pressure, but this might be a, a tank fed one. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's not mains pressure. No, I think there's a pipe going into the tank and this thing, there's a motor inside it. Like that, and it sucks oh, the water right, out. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a gravity fed one. I'm right. with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, probably Do looking... You, I mean, I, I did say, uh, actually, you know, what I could do is shove a load of glue in there and actually glue it onto the spindle. But that would be the last pair I could possibly repair I could possibly do to it. Because the next time That's it right. goes wrong, you'd have to break it off. And that, That's that... True. That's very true. on the other hand, the I mean, shower is like twenty years old, so maybe one last repair. Trying... I can't remember it's either Bristol or Armitage Shanks, but they keep every single spare they ever made. Right. I can't remember which company it is. It's either Armitage Shanks or Bristol. But one of those two companies keep every single spare they ever made. OK, well, I, I, I will ring them then tomorrow. Br Briston, yeah, you said. Let me write that down. Briston, yeah. B-R-I-S-T-O-N, I believe it is. Briston. Right. I'm pretty sure they do most of the parts, because I had to replace... My mum's got an old set of um, kitchen mixer taps um, with a very long swan neck um, spout on them. And she didn't want to replace them because they were about 300 quid when my dad bought them for about 20 yeah. years ago. And uh, I could still get the I could still get the cartridge and the replacement stops of those. So it might be a case that you can, or they may just turn around and say, well, actually, so you can replace it with the XT1, XT100. All you've got to do is replace the cartridge, which is 30 quid or something, and then you can have the different knob. It might be a case of that. Do you know what I mean? All right, OK. I'll, I'll listen might, to what he yeah, said. Is that something you can do? Yeah, that's no problem. I can do that. I but, mean, or if, worse, if worse comes to the worst and it does go completely, I think they're about 140 quid. <clears> would would you? Would, what What do you reckon on the idea? I mean, I'll try and repair this once more, if they yeah. have, if they haven't got one by by re gluing and then putting a bit of gaffer tape round. I'll have to mm -hmm. see if the gaffer tape will go into the hole though. It might start catching when I turn turn the damn thing round. Um, yeah. But if that doesn't work, what do you reckon on the thing of actually gluing this onto the spindle? You could do. I, I mean, mean, it would. It as would, I said, it would, it would be the it, it would be the last repair you could ever do to it because once it goes, then you'd have to just break it off to replace the shower. Well, wouldn't uh, you? At the at the end of the day, if you can't get a replacement um, control knob, um, then I would go for the gluing option. Now I know there are these sort of self retaining um, spring clips that you can get that sort of open up and then they fight. <laughs> You know, they, they close down afterwards. That's what I was looking for, yes. Is that what it's called, a self-retaining spring clip? I believe so, yeah. Um, right. I would say you'd probably get something like that. Um, where would you get something like that? RS components. Right, um, OK. Or, I don't know if Matlins might do something like that, because the sort of thing you would put on... You know, it'd probably be something like on, on the back of you... Um, one of your old DJ uh, mixers or something like that would might have something like that. Oh yes, yes, I never thought about that. Yeah. You got if you've got an old broken mixer laying around, yeah. you might better cannibalise something off of that. Oh, I've got several several old mixers that I don't use anymore. Funnily enough, might be oh, something right. on the back of there. I'll have a look. Yeah, just if there's one that's um, 
a bit kaput and see Because you know on some of the old... Um, Hello, Ricky! Uh, ...switches, on yes. some of the old switches, they have some sort of retaining clip that holds them on. It's sort of like a spring clip. Yeah. Um, again, you might be, out, might be out of going to Matson's and get a very small Jubilee clip. Yes, or even Wix, something like that. I'll have, yeah, a look, I'll have a look to see how much space I've got around the hull as well. Extremely small. <clears throat> yes, it has got to um, be. It's got to be thin. So that's. I'm yeah. not even sure that if I put. I've got to. Have, I'll have a look first. But even if I put gaffer tape around it, it might be too thick. You see. Yep, I'm with you. Yeah, and the gaffer I know, tape. I think. I know the I gaffer tape. Was... The gaffer tape won't hold it on its own, but with right. glue, it might just do it. I don't know how for long. I think, yeah, something like Arrow Diet or Stick Like. Um, yeah. It, 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 there's another stuff called um, Stick Like SH Dash Dash. Right. And that's what it's actually called. Um, it's obviously a, a swear word, but it, that, yeah. that's what happens when it's on the label. To um, Tony, Tony Powers just sent me a thing for Briston product, so I'll, I'll have a look at that when I finish the show later on. Yeah. Best to give them a ring because, you know, it might be a, a discontinued part that they have to yes. order in specially. You know, off, off, off it. You know, they might have one floating around on their on their shelves, gathering dust. You never know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's what I was open on eBay, but but no joy there at all. I was yeah, convinced I, I was going to find this I, stuff I on eBay. Look on, I looked on various sites, and it was a sort of everything came up as the XT100. But again, you might be able to just replace the actual um, thermostat. Um, you know, the thermostat bit in the middle, right. and um, and obviously that that would be an XT. That would be an XT1000. Uh, Lovely. That would be an XT1000. But there we go. That Hopefully that should get you out of trouble. Okay. If not, uh, well, thank you very much about, for your kind help there, Adam the Plumber. It's very kind of you. They're about, 100, they're about 140 quid new. What, brand new? Yeah. So, fitting? Fitting-wise, probably about 40, 50 quid, if oh, that. that. Oh, that would be all right, actually. The thing yeah, is, so, the just... thing is, at the moment, you know, if if it was worn out and not working very well, I'd replace it. But it isn't. Yeah. It, it works really mm -hmm. well. It's it's a really powerful shower, and you know, yeah, you can shove be, it yeah. underneath you, and it clears out all your insides. It's wonderful, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what you like? It really does come out hard. This water. Well done. Now, that. just before you go, you've been slim as yep. well this week. Last week, I you have... put on one pound. One pound. Uh, uh, this week, please. Uh -huh. Boom. I, this week, I have lost two pounds. Excellent. Excellent. Well done. I'm just coming to my slim as well in a moment, Adam. Oh, good. I, will, I shall I'll wait come to that in a moment to find out what you've done. Excellent. So, if if um, yeah, I'll 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 try this tomorrow. Uh, oh, yep. If if no luck, I'll try and re-glue it and perhaps find yeah. a clip. Or, or, and if no luck on know, that, often, I'll glue it on. And that's it. And often, you know, Briston sometimes have have a contact list of people that, you know, they can recommend. Their Lovely. Tale. Joe Bloggs does those for us on our behalf. Lovely. Lovely. Excellent. Right. Have a good show. Thank you very Thank much, you Adam. Soon. Appreciate your call. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Adam the Plumber calling in there from uh, Sid Cup. He's been a bit disappointed the last couple of days because he usually listens to the show as he's driving around the UK doing his, uh, uh, sorry, uh, London and the South East doing his uh, regular, um, uh, his regular uh, uh, plumbing jobs there. Let's say hello to some more people who are just joining us uh, on the show tonight. Hello to Kim. Greetings, Kim. Kimmy up in Lincolnshire. Greetings, Kimmy. Uh, Ricky, now these, can you see these Belgian truffles? Ricky, who's just joined us there, he bought me these. He's recently been to Belgium. I can't think why. There's nothing of interest there at all. But him and his other half, uh, who's getting married to next year, Guy. Um, and I'm going to the wedding. And I'm going to the wedding and not having to work. How fantastic is that? Blooming great. No one ever invites me to weddings or anything like that. You know, where I haven't got to do some DJ. Well, I don't do DJ anymore. I don't, I've don't. i stopped DJing, as you, as you well know. I gave it up a few weeks ago completely. Um, but yes, they've been to Belgium and bought me some Belgian truffles. So thank you very much for these. These won't go to waste. They won't go to waste. When I hit 12 stone, okay, when I hit 12 stone, I will have these probably all in one go. I'm convinced that now and again, you can cheat. But you've got to do it in one hit. Not just one. I have one a day in there. Oh, I just have one today. Oh, I just have one today. No, not good. 
I reckon I should have all these in one hit when I get to 12 stone. What do you think, Slimmers people? Huh? Let me know. Let me know. Thank you very much for those. I do appreciate those. Uh, when... <laughs> What's this now? What has he done? Oh, when did... Oh, oh, Tony's bought the chat online thing. Thank you, chat. Yeah, it was one of those chat online things. Um, so, as you can see, I have still haven't had those chocolates yet. You ever use those chat online things? I used one this morning. What was that for? Or British... Was it British Gas or some insurance thing that I've got somewhere? For one of the uh, one of the properties that I rent out, I can't remember now. So something like that, yeah. Well done, Adam. So you're doing very well. Incidentally, boys and girls, this is the first show that is coming to you via the brand new Virgin Media Router. Oh yes, I have upped my speed. I now have a three three. I now have a three hundred meg connection, which I've tested uh, several times now. Uh, and it the, 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 that speed test thing is telling me I've got 320 meg going down and 22 meg going up. So anyone has buffering, it's bound to be your end and not mine now. OK, I'm really pleased with this. So I've got the new Virgin router. You know, remember I was waiting for that on Monday's show, actually. While we were doing the show on Monday morning, there was a knock, knock at my door and it was the new Virgin Media router. Comes in a very big box. Oh, I love getting boxes. Hang on a minute. Where is it now? Here's my box. Look at this box. And it's all, the box is all branded. Look at the size. It's like a shoebox, dear. Like a, look at the size of this box. And it opens up and it's all, look, it's all branded inside. Isn't that clever? Look, what a lovely box. I don't think I've ever seen a box as beautiful. Oh, it's, what's this here? Didn't even read this. Uh, oh, it's oh, it's advertising their other products. Get the get the phone bag, the headphones. Oh, they're, they're selling phones and things. What else is this? No need to return your old box. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Recycle more. So they do. Are they? Do they want it back or not? So there we are. Uh, I've got my new hub. Here's the old one. <coughs> And these hubs seem to be getting bigger and bigger. Here's the old one. Look at the size of that, okay? Uh, the new one, you can't see. I don't think I can show it to you. No, it's over there. I haven't got a camera that size. Um, but the new box is about twice the width of that. And it's it's quite. It's about the same height, maybe a little bit bigger, with all the four things on the back. I, I plug all these all this equipment in here is plugged in. I don't use Wi-Fi only for my, like, phone. And I've got a laptop that I, I sometimes bring in here to update. Um, I'm always doing my updating here, not at work. And uh, funnily enough, I've got to put some new karaoke songs. We've got a new Sunfly karaoke disc, uh, which I've, got, I've just purchased uh, this afternoon, actually. I've got to put on the new laptop. So that's, that's all working. So this is the first show coming to you via the brand new Virgin Media Router. Oh, yes. And it was so easy to set up. Oh, my God. It was honestly so easy. So it comes with, like, an installation guide. There it is. Uh, number one, activate. You ring a phone number. Uh, and you've got your bill, Andy. And no, not, not talking to anyone. You just press buttons, you know. But press press your account number. So whatever it is, 8764321 <clears throat> and all that business. And it says, please hold. Your box has now been activated. We have sent a signal. Please, if you have an, an, an audio business, and then you turn it off and you turn it on a couple of times and the little lights flash and then a, just a single white light at the bottom. There's no flashing lights on this one, which I find rather disappointing. I do like flashing lights on pieces of equipment, don't you? Flashing away, green, red, green, red, all that business going on. No, nothing on this. Just a single white line, solid, not flashing at the bottom. Very, very disappointing. I used to like, you know, when I walk from my bedroom to the toilet at night a couple of times a night, I like to just pop in and check that the lights are still flashing, but not anymore. Just a single blue light. Very disappointing. I reckon the neighbour who lives over there is probably quite pleased about that. I'm sure these blue and red flashing lights on my modems have been keeping her awake for years. <laughs> so there we are. That's, that's a new thing happening there. OK, 0208 uh, is my phone number. So that was Monday. Had the karaoke night on Monday. And as I say, Ricky and his other half bought in uh, my Belgian chocolates there. Not only that, someone has bought me in gifts uh, on Monday. And, do you know, it's so kind. People are often bringing in little gifts uh, to me at my karaoke nights. And Ray Reynolds. 
very good friend of mine, bought me in two items. Got to show you this. I am so pleased that he bought me in this. A little have a nice day bag. Have a nice day! <laughs> Look what he bought me in. You'll love this. If you're of an age, you'll want this. The Blue Peter Annual from the early 1970s. Now, I had this. Ray won't know, but I actually had this when I was a little boy. Of course, when you're a little boy, you tend to open it. Pages get a bit ripped. You start drawing things on it and all that business. And I don't know where it went. It probably got chucked out along with everything else when, when my mother died, you know. Um, that was in 2000. I, I couldn't bring myself to go to the house and chuck stuff. I did go to the house after, uh, after I lost my mother. Father in 1996 and mother in 2000. I did go to the house afterwards. And, um, you know, it's, it, 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 it's very strange standing in your mother's bedroom when they've got when she's gone that's that's a really weird experience um that's 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 all i can say about that really it's strange but uh you know walking around the house and and what have you we had a a, a masonette in in roehampton but i couldn't check anything out and i had to get my sister she had to come down from lincolnshire uh, along with her husband and i think the children as well and they cleared the house out i think they I can't remember if they got a skip or just chucked it down the bottom there and the bin man just takes it away then, you see. And that's it. But I, they, they had to chuck it out. And um, this possibly, my my copy of this possibly went out as well at the same time, along with everything else, you know, old train layout and beds and things like that. Oh, you know, I just couldn't do it. Top marks to my sister for doing that. Anyway, Ray bought me in this Monday. And as soon as Ray bought me in this on Monday at the karaoke, and as soon as I do it, I, I thought, oh, wow. Wow. And on the front cover, as I say, this is the Blue Peter annual. And Blue Peter are not having a good time at the moment. Apparently, uh, I saw an article in the paper last week, uh, or this week, this early this week, that said one of the Blue Peter episodes this week or last week didn't get any viewers at all. Well, they probably did, but it didn't scale on the... Um, Rajar figures. Rajar figures are the um, audience ratings. You know, how many people watched any given programme. Now, years ago, there were all... Virtually, you couldn't talk to a child who had not seen an episode of Blue Peter. You, th it wasn't possible to find someone who had never seen Blue Peter. Now, a lot of the children don't even know what it is. And quite frankly, I'm not surprised. The way it's been mucked about, first of all, they, they yanked it off BBC One and bought out this blooming children's TV channel. You know, so we lost all the children's programmes on BBC One Colour, didn't we? A, a number of years ago now. Whereas before, everything was on that one channel, replaced by quiz shows and other load of old rubbish. So that killed it. And then I think they cut it down from three nights a week to one night a week. And have you seen the presenters on there now? Fake, dear. Oh, hello. Welcome to Blue Peter. <laughs> it's all a bit like that. They're talking down to you. Down to you. They're not fun at all. It's all fun. If they were having fun and I actually believed it, I might enjoy watching it. But I watched it uh, the other day just after John Noakes died. Uh, that's John Noakes there. OK, that's John Lokes there. He was my Blue Peter hero. In fact, he was one of my childhood heroes. And I've got a lot of childhood heroes. Some of them are in blooming prison now for pedophilia. <laughs> uh, who was it? Stuart Hall. It's a knockout. He, he got done, didn't he? And of course, Rolf Harris, childhood hero. But not John Noakes. He was just an ordinary bloke. There he is there. Uh, that's Petra, the dog. Can't remember the cat's name. That's Valerie Singleton. Don't know what that dog's name is. Shep isn't on here. His, his favourite dog was Shep. And that's Peter Purvis there. And this is the sixth annual. And I'm so pleased with this. And that car, look at that car. BP1, look at that. Look at the car there. I have a Blue Peter badge as well. That is a red Blue Peter badge. I don't know what you got that for. I got a Blue Peter badge. Uh, a Blue Blue Peter badge. And um, there's the old studio there. Look at that old television camera there. And uh, just wonderful. It just um, what a wonderful, wonderful gift to have, and um, <laughs> actually, I haven't, I haven't looked right the way through this yet. 
but I tried to make one of these at Christmas. She was showing you, Valerie Singleton, how to make tinsel sweet cheese. I tried to make this. I, I always tried to make the stuff that they had on Blue Peter. What else is there? How to make things out of newspapers. I tried that. I remember trying that unsuccessfully. I wasn't very good at that. Uh, what else have we got here? Stories. Oh, the ballet at Rich... Yes, I remember... <laughs> Ballet at Richmond Park, I think that is. Let's have a look. There we are, the Ballet at Richmond Park. That's John Lokes as well there. And uh, they always used to have... There it is. They always used to have some sort of appeal at Christmas. <clears throat> and they'd have some sort of light-up totalizer in, you know, prominently in the Blue Peter studio where they would show you how much or what, what they had raised so far. And uh, that is the um, one of the totalizers there, you see. And as stuff would come in, that you'd light up another light. So there it is at the bottom there, and it goes right up to the top. And that, that was their appeal total there at the top. And each week, they, they'd go across to the totalizer and um, light some stuff off. And here's the sort of stuff that they used to um, uh, collect uh, this is this is 1964, so that I was only one year old then. But uh, their target was three tons of silver paper, and they were saving up for a guide dog for the blind, and they ended up getting two and a half guide dogs. Well, I don't know, <laughs> don't quite know how you get half a guide dog. Or does it mean it's only got one eye or something like that? <laughs> you just imagine them two and a half guide dogs coming off. In 1965, they wanted to buy a tractor. Uh, for somewhere in South Africa, uh, in, in Africa. They required 15,000 parcels of wool. They got 45,000 parcels of wool, which bought a tractor, a disc plough, a rotavator, a rigger, plus fuel and maintenance for a year. And they were always doing stuff. Uh, inshore rescue boats, 1966, I would have been three then. They tried to raise 60,000 paper-backed books. They raised 240,000 paperback books and four inshore rescue boats. And when you was a child watching these, this programme in those days, you, 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 you felt a part of it. And they would have these appeals and every single time that they'd have some sort of target, I don't know, like, you know, a million felt tip pens. And they would always get five million felt tip pens, you know? You, you actually felt compelled to assist them in whatever they wanted to do. Unlike now where I think everyone is me, 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 aren't they? Don't you think? I, this, this charity night I'm doing um, in a few years' time is probably the first thing I've done as a charity do for years and years and years. I felt I wanted to give something back. And for some reason, I don't know why why we don't do that anymore. It's all about looking after ourselves or, or our families. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm a bit tight where it comes to myself. For example, with the shower. I was telling you I want to repair this shower because I don't want to shell out the 200 quid for buying a new one. Right? But if my niece and nephew use something, I wouldn't dream of getting of a fix it. I'd just buy them a new one. It's a bit like that. But with charity stuff and, and all this business, I, I, I do wonder, you know, if they if they did some... I don't know if they still do these things at Christmas, whether or not they still, you know, try and raise, collect stamps or tins or something like that, you know, to, to buy a tractor in Africa or whatever, or a new hospital piece of equipment, something like that. I don't know if that would work now. I don't know if they still do it now. But that that's the Blue Peter album as bought in uh, uh, from my very good friend Ray Reynolds, and I'm really, really pleased with that. Uh, he did buy me something else. Oh, let's have a look at your messages. Um, Wendy says, wonderful gift. Oh, it is a wonderful gift. I can sit there and flick through that and just remember that I read that first as a child of, I don't know, Christ knows how old I was then, seven, eight years old, something like that. Mm. Uh, Gustav says it's a shame Blue Peter never showed you how to make a shower knob out of milk bottle tops you'd be sorted now <laughs> <laughs> oh dear of course you were an advantage in those days 
if you bought cheap washing up liquid because you could get get the washing up liquid bottles so much quicker than these posh mums who used to buy the fairy liquid, which goes on and on and on. I wonder if there are there, there must be children out there who used to watch this program go to go outside to their mum's fairy liquid bottles, realise how fun it was and just chuck it away so that they, so that they could have the bottle and put it back. And then mum would say, anyone been using a fairy liquid? No, not me, mum. But when the bottle's empty, can I have it, please? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Hmm? Anyway, that's not all Ray, that's not all Ray brought me in. He brought me in a picture as well. Here's the picture. And then I looked at the front. Skegness. Oh, my God. It's so bracing. Look at this. Skegness. How can I have that in my studio, Ray? Come on. Ghastly place. Absolutely ghastly. The area, the people, the chip shops, the ice cream place. Dreadful place. Skegness. I'm not pointing out about that. Do you know that actually fits in, doesn't it? So I put it out there. <laughs> I can have pictures of all the different places that I used to go to. That might be an idea behind me, mightn't it? What do you reckon? Would that work? Or would it be too busy behind me? I think it'd be too busy if we had too much up there. I couldn't, re I couldn't replace that. I tell you what, for one show only, let's replace this. Hang on a minute. For one show only. There we are. See, it is, it is a real picture. You thought it was superimposed on there, didn't you? Look. There we are. <laughs> is that straight? There we are. Skegness. You can't really see that. Oh, you can. There we are. Skegness. Thank you, Ray Reynolds. <laughs> Dreadful place. Dreadful. Ghastly. So there's my Skegness poster up on the wall. Uh, it's given to me by Ray Reynolds. Now, let me just... I want to put my book on the side. I don't want to damage this. Do you know, there's some wonderful things people have brought me into places that I work or indeed used to um, send in here to the um, Mirabal Studios as well. You know, people used to send stuff in when we had an address. There is no address for you to send anything in uh, anymore, I'm afraid. You'd, you'd have to, you know, bring it along to one of the places I work at. I did have a post office box years ago. <clears throat> and um, people uh, used to send stuff in. Oh, M Millie used to send, you know, motorised Millie. She often sent things in, but um, all of a sudden, uh, the post office decided to increase the price of it quite substantially, actually. A substantial increase in price, and it went to something like 240 quid or something like that a year. And, you know, for, for like four four parcels a year, it's just not worth it, really. So we stopped that. But, uh, yeah, wonderful stuff uh, people have bought me in. Wendy... Um, who's with us today has bought me in several things actually there's that little duck which is actually supposed to it's supposed to store your glasses on that but that never happens really <laughs> store your glasses on that and um uh this cups and things i've got my my glass thing there which which is actually engraved i, I don't know if you can see the engrave this may go out of focus here let's see. there you, you can see it yeah oh look at that you can see it look so that's all engraved inside. That's she bought me that for my ten year anniversary, um, which was which was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? That's coming up to two years ago. Uh, Adam bought me this the other day. Nice United Kingdom talk teapot. He was asking me if I've used it yet. No, dear, we can't be using that, my love. Eloise sent me in the light up cat you saw behind there. Well, I change those things um, quite regularly now, so there's always something new to look at there. So it's, it's ever so kind for people to send. Uh, uh, bits and pieces in here uh, to the movable studio. Right. Um, I'm getting quite peckish now. I think I might have to disappear soon for my dinner. I've got, what have I got? Uh, rice and um, I'm going to do some rice, wholemeal rice and uh, my, um, uh, my a bit more of my stew, which I did too much of, far too much of. I've got, an, I've got a slow cooker. Anyone got a slow cooker? Oh, it's fantastic. Just pour it all in, turn it on, 12 hours later it's done. Anyway, I did a big thing on there yesterday. Well, the idea is when I do cooking, I tend to do a lot more than I need. Um, and then I just freeze it. Well, I've run out of freezing things. <laughs> I've got so much in the freezer. I love to start eating it. I've, my freezer is stuffed of food now. And a lot of it is home cooked. And I've got uh, glass dishes, you know, with the lids. I did have plastic ones once, but they stain ever so easily, don't they? 
you know, and if you just um, if you've done something with a lot of tomatoes, and it then it forevermore it's it's red or orange, in the bottom of the of the plastic. Then once that's dyed colour, which which that can't be very good, can it? So there must be bits of food that have leached into the plastic. Do you think? Is it possible something like that's happening? It's awful. So is it actually clean? I wonder anymore. Or um. I don't know, really, if, it, if that's clean or not. A bit worrying, really. Anyway, so I've run out of the glass things, uh, which I didn't realise, so I've got to keep eating it now till it's all gone. Although I have put it in the fridge, so I've got that to eat with some uh, uh, rice later on. So, let's go to Tuesday, and Tuesday is Slimmer's World Day, boys and girls. Tuesday is the day I go to Slimmer's World. Uh, we had a food-tasting thing this week, which was rather marvellous. Um, all sorts of people bought in their concoctions and their little food, and there were uh, <coughs> there was crustless quiche, which one lady has, had made out of her leftovers, uh, you know, chopped up carrots and peas and things like that, which she combined with eggs. There is no pastry around the outside. That's where your damage is, you see, the pastry. The pastry is your pastry, bread, all that stuff. That's where your damage is. That doesn't mean you don't have to ever eat pastry again. Now and again, it's all right. But I'm afraid the days of going out twice a day and having, I don't know, a, a Cornish pasty or a cheese and onion pasty and perhaps a Bakewell tart with pastry, that, those days are gone, mate. <laughs> and I used to be one of those in my younger days. Oh, God, yeah. When I worked for British Telecom. I'd have a sausage roll every morning, followed by some sort of sandwich. Afternoon might be something with bread. Then in the afternoon, you know, a cake of some sort. Perhaps, as I say, a Bakewell tart with thick pastry around the side and a big cherry. I never used to like cherries. Did you? Do you like cherries? Oh, vile things, dear. Disgusting things, cherries. I used to throw those away. Um, and stuff like that, you see. Anyway, that was all there. So there was a crustless quiche. There was, um, oh, uh, 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 Linda, who runs Slimming World, she'd made a chocolate cheesecake. Oh, my God, it was to die for. It really was. And it's ever so easy. Now, the way she made it, she got some biscuits, smashed them all up, you know, and lined the um, the dish with that. She uses, I think it's called quark, quark, fat-free soft cheese. Now, I don't know if you've ever had that. It's in all the major supermarkets, quark. I can't remember, quark, quark, that's it, Q-W-A-R-K, I think that's correct. So that's the fat-free cheese. And she puts in there an amount of options chocolate powder. And it's so simple. And you just mix it all up, put it in there with, with, with an amount of chocolate powder. I can't remember how much she put in there now. Now, it's the chocolate powder, in this case, and the biscuit base that does the damage. Not a lot of damage, but nevertheless, it counts as your daily allowance of sins. And on top, she put some raspberries. Oh, it was lovely. Oh, my God, I just had the tiniest piece of this. It was delicious. And then some other lady, she bought in Bombay potatoes. And someone put in some sort of pasta dish. And it was really, really nice. Really, really nice. And then we had the weigh-in. Last week, I was a little bit disappointed. But not surprised. I put on a pound last week. So, so far, week one, down three and a half pounds. Week two, down two pounds. Week three... Down three and a half pounds. Week four, up one pound. Week five, down four and a half pounds. How's that? Over the moon. Over the moon. And I didn't really do anything different last week than I did the week before. So how is it you can put... Well, I, I did. I did, actually. <clears throat> so week four, I stuck to plan, eating hardly any sins. Most of the food I ate was from the free food section. The free food section 
on, on these lists of food that you can or can't or, or shouldn't have or should have a small amount of, the free food section, you can eat as much as you want. I've said this several times. I'm telling you again because there might be people there who, who, who haven't heard this yet, you see. Things in the free food list, you would be surprised. Wholemeal spaghetti, whole rice, almost every item of vegetables or fruit. Avocado is a bit of a strange one. That's, uh, that's not on the free food list. And week four, I hardly had any sins at all. And yet I put a pound on. Week five, similar again, hardly any sins at all, except one day where I had to go out. Uh, it was Saturday afternoon. And I went to meet my auntie. We went to that um, pub that I like again, the the the, the anchor where cousin, Judge Helen was. Judge Helen. That's my cousin Helen who judges me all the time, you see. So I call her Judge Helen was there. Auntie Marion, uh, who told me off again because I was late by three minutes. And cousin Vince, who was over from Australia. He's gone back now. And we was in this restaurant. I didn't fancy anything on there. And, and in the end, I had four bits of garlic bread, which is probably two bits of garlic bread because they're only small bits. Uh, mushroom soup, a bread roll and onion rings. Really bad. A hell of a lot of sins there. There must be 20, 30 sins in that one meal. So I had that that week. And yet that's the week I lost four and a half pounds. Weird, isn't it? But you must remember the rest of the week, I'm really, really serious about this whole thing and sticking to plan. Remember, I've said to you so many times, Slimming World, it's not about how much you eat. If you eat loads of stuff from the free food section, you're never hungry. I'm serious, you are never hungry. Tonight, I'm going downstairs. I shall have my rice, a uh, big load of wholemeal rice, and my um, uh, stew that I've done in the slow cooker. I think the gravy contains a small amount of sins, maybe two or three sins in the gravy. But everything else, carrots, peas, Corn cubes, uh, loads of onions. I love onions. So that's what I've got for dinner today. So four and a half pounds down. So total weight loss now, 12 and a half pounds in four weeks. This is week five, but you see we're in week five now. So that's four weeks I've done, 12 and a half pounds. So I've got my fingers crossed. I might get to a stone next Tuesday, a stone down. And now people are telling me that they're noticing. Oh, you look a bit thin in the face, Chris. Because a lot of people sometimes say, if they don't know what you're doing, they think you've got ill. <laughs> oh, you're all right, dear. You're all right. Are you ill? A little bit like that. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, Wendy says, I could tell you'd lost weight when you stood up to hang up your skeggy pitch from Ray. The stern isn't as wide. <laughs> stern. <laughs> like an old ship, dear. Like the Queen Victoria. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Fantastic weight loss. And uh, Lisa says, love Slimming World. Oh, Lisa goes as well. There you go. Lisa goes to a Slimming World as well. Hello, Craig. I haven't seen you for a while there. <laughs> All aboard. <laughs> I'm like an old boat, aren't I, dear? Do you know what my mate calls me in the swimming pool? Calls me Tugboat Lil. Tugboat Lil is in the pool. Watch out, everyone. <laughs> So that was my Slimmer's World. Uh, came home from there. Had a bit of lunch. Corn steaks and baked beans. I had a quite like that meal. I often had that when I come in from work, actually, like 12 o'clock at night. I'll do two corn steaks. Peppered corn steaks. Oh, they're delicious. And they just kind of give it a little bit of bite to the back of the throat as well. Corn steaks with pepper. And a whole tin of baked beans on top of those I'll have sometimes when I come in from work. And I go to bed after that. Just going back to that um, uh, quark soft cheese. Now, that itself, quark fat-free soft cheese is a free food. You can have as much as you want for that. And I noticed, I, I made, I did try making the chocolate cheesecake. But, <clears throat> and I got the tub of, quark, actually Waitrose sell it, quark soft cheese. Got that tub and I bought a, a jar of options I didn't know how much to put in. Anyway, I, I was very concerned that I was increasing the sin value by putting the chocolate powder in, which, of course, you do. So I think I put in two teaspoons. That was it. <laughs> I couldn't even taste it. Because <laughs> that quark soft cheese is... I have to say it's tasteless. 
It's a little bit like having cream, but with no sugar in it. I mean, you could, if you wanted, add sugar. Or maybe that Candorel stuff. I don't know if Candorel has any sins in it at all. But I don't find it necessary. Anyway, so I got this tub of quark when I got home. Put some of the chocolate powder in it. Add a good mix-up. And it kind of changed colours a little bit. It went from white to sort of a dirty, whitey, browny colour. And I thought, oh, that'd be, that'd be enough. I don't want to increase the sins too much. And I laid it out in a little glass thing. I got my raspberries, sprinkled over a load of raspberries on top and shoved it in the fridge for, for an hour while I was having my dinner. <clears throat> and then I got a bit out and I had it out. Oh, it was absolutely delicious. Because the cheese, this soft cheese, doesn't actually taste like cheese. That's the weird thing about it. It's pretty tasteless, but it's very, very nice. So what I've started doing with that now is having that on strawberries. And it's like very, uh, it's like whipped cream. You know, not, not, you know when the cream goes stiff? What is that whipped? I think that's whipped cream, isn't it? But stiffer. I've started putting it on strawberries. It's absolutely delicious and sin-free. Sin-free. I love it. I've had half a tub today on some strawberries downstairs. This afternoon, I may well have some more again later on. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Lisa said she lost eight pounds in her first week. Well done, Lisa. That's fantastic. Uh, I have noticed that the larger ladies that go, and they all tend to be ladies, there's only three fellas. There's another bloke who call, talks to me, Peter. He's lost about five stone altogether. He's very, very tall. And there's another bloke, he don't seem to talk to anyone, though. He comes with his missus, and they just sit there looking miserable all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe they haven't lost any weight yet. I don't, I don't know. But um, uh, well done, Lisa. I think, uh, I, I, no disrespect to you, but I think the bigger you are, the more you can lose in that first time period. That is how it seems to me. There was a very large lady who was coming in. Um, and in the first week, she lost 11 pounds. I went around and shook her hand. Fantastic. 11 pounds in the first week. That's fantastic, isn't it? Anyway, so I've made this stuff and I sat down and I did, and it was really nice. My mate came round and um, I'd done him some dinner on Tuesday night. Now, this is why I wasn't with you Tuesday night. Uh, I'd done him some dinner, and uh, I said, do you want to try some of my cheesecake? He said, yeah, OK, then. Now, I didn't put the biscuit in the bottom. Again, because it adds, it puts the sins, it increases the uh, the calories, you see. So I didn't put any of that in there. So I've got it, and I've dished that. And he's like, he said, what is this? I said, it's my homemade crustless cheesecake. He said, well, it's not cheesecake then, is it? I said, well, why not? It's because you haven't got the biscuit in the bottom. I said, well, it is. It's crustless cheesecake. He was like, it's picking faults, dear. Picking faults, dear. So he's eating it. I said, what do you think? He said, uh, well, I'll have the raspberries. I said, well, don't you like it? He said, well, no. I said, well, it's chocolate cheesecake. He said, I can't even taste the chocolate. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. Sod you. It's not for you anyway. It's for me. Don't want it? Don't eat it. All the more for me. Thank you very much. I loved it. Try it. You want to lose weight? Try it. Get yourself some quark, Q-W-A-R-K, I think it is. Fat-free soft cheese. It comes in a tub. It's quite stiff. Put it in a glass thing and sprinkle some berries on the top of your choice. Blueberries, strawberries, don't matter what it is. You can, if you want, put chocolate powder. I don't think I'm going to bother putting in chocolate powder. I quite like it as it is. And eat it. Oh, it's delicious. Or put that fat-free soft cheese, put it on your um, uh, on your strawberries or something like that instead of cream. No sins. See, no sins. Lisa's doing steak, homemade chips, mushrooms and onions for tea. Now, that that's I would have that. Again, you can have chips. It's how you do them. You put them in the, in the oven, in one of those pan things. Okay, chop them up. Made from scratch, okay, so potato... Chop up potato, spray this thing with spray light, okay? And they do different flavours of that as well. For, I beg your pardon, fry light. Spray it with fry light, put your chips in, spray them with fry light in the oven. It says 40 minutes, I'd give them 50 if you want them nice and crunchy. Oh, they're lovely. And swap tomato sauce for vinegar. No sins in vinegar. Tomato sauce have quite high sin value in tomato sauce, so you don't want any of that. You could, of course, chop up a tomato and shove that across the top. You know, maybe in the last, I 
don't know, in the last 15 minutes. Maybe a bit of garlic on there. Rosemary. Oh, the smell of rosemary. Don't you love that as it comes out the oven? Oh, delicious. Delicious. Wendy says, rubbish. The cheesecake is the base without the biscuit. You don't need the biscuits for cheesecake. There you go. See, Wendy agrees with me. Don't need, the, don't need it. He's just picking. He's just picking. It's all right. Won't be having any more of that. I should be making some of that. More of that soon. Oh, it's delicious, Wendy. Delicious to you. Maybe I should bring some down when I come and do the uh, uh, the, uh, the the um, the the fundraiser down in Woking in a few weeks' time. That's a nice idea, isn't it? Good. Um, so that was Tuesday. Uh, so Tuesday night. Let me have a look there. Uh, Wait, we went to Waitrose after I've been to Slimming World. Ronnie spent ninety nine pounds in there. Oh God's sake! I mean, he had, he had an awful lot of shopping. I spent about fifty quid in there. I find myself spending more on food now. Um, that's probably because I'm, I've am i kind of changed all my food. That won't go on forever. You know, and besides, I've been cooking a lot and I've got a lot in the freezer now, which I need to start eating because there's no more room in the freezer now. Came back home, had a sleep, got up. I did a, another one of my spaghetti arabetta sauces. Made that from scratch. I do cheat a little bit with that. I buy packets of frozen chilli and frozen garlic now, which I just shove in. I, I shove the whole packet in. <laughs> there was a bloke. Was it Was it Tuesday I saw someone? Or I can't remember. I had some garlic one afternoon about 12 o'clock. I went to work. I, was, I think it was Monday night, actually. And at 10 o'clock, someone came. He said, have you had garlic? I said, about 10 hours ago, that was. <laughs> Wendy wants me to bring in the cheesecake. I might just do that, Wendy. So I got up, did that cooker. Ronnie came round. And uh, he's been on holiday, of course. He was in Malaga last week. Ghastly place, dear. Oh, God. And then he went on a... To make it even worse, so he went on a day trip to Torrey Molinos. Or Terrible Molinos, as Ronnie named it. Anyway, he's back from holiday. And we usually have Tuesday night here. We watch a couple of programmes and he goes about up past 10, quarter to 11. And then I come up and do a late night show. Well, Tuesday, of course, there were two episodes of Broken that he hadn't seen. So we watched Holby. And then we watched the two episodes of Broken, which has just finished. I think it's on the iPlayer. An excellent programme, boys and girls. It's a, it's a drama and it's about a Catholic priest and how he's involved in different areas of the community. It was very, very well done. Very, very good programme. Still on the iPlayer if you want to watch that. I think there's about four or six programmes. OK, Broken, B-R-O-K-E-N. Watch that tonight when I've finished. It's a good programme. And, uh, of course, so we had three shows to watch. By then it was half past 12 and I wanted to go to bed. So that's why there was no late night show uh, on uh, Tuesday night. Because often we do a late night show there, don't we? Uh, Wednesday morning... I got up, done some gardening, went to see the doctor. As I say, I got the the the, um, uh, the, the tablets uh, and all that. And I also spent some time on the phone to Toyota on Wednesday night. Uh, you may remember I, I, I told you I can't connect my three iPhone, my, my, my iPhone on the three network to my Toyota Touch and Go. And I've been emailing and messaging both Toyota and three as well. And they've both been extremely helpful, both companies. But we don't seem to be able to find what the problem is. Uh, so I'm still unable to do that. Indeed, uh, this morning, Toyota rung me this morning uh, from head office. And they were, said, can you go to your car? And we'll try some stuff. And we're trying some stuff and all this business. And couldn't. So we still can't get it to connect. Now, I went to Toyota yesterday. Uh, I popped in there. And a boy came out. And you, you always want someone young to come out with you and do these things, right? Because old people like myself, we can't work this stuff. We can't work technology. So I want someone... It's like when you go into Maplins. You go into Maplins, and if you need help, go in there on a sun, Saturday morning or a Sunday morning and go for the youngest person in there because they know what to do. <laughs> it's true. Don't go for the manager. We're not a bloody clue. Not a clue. You've got to go for someone young because they understand technology like we don't. And this boy came out, and he's in the car, and he says, let me try and connect my phone. So he connected his phone, he's, he's on O2, and he's got an iPhone 7. Now, I've only got an iPhone SE, and he was able to connect and use the internet as well through the car. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why do you need the internet in your car? The reason being is the car comes with its own sat-nav. It will give me traffic, and I try and avoid traffic if I'm connected to the internet. 
You see, that's why I want the car connected to the internet. But I can't get it to work. He was able to do it. So now we're thinking, well, is it the phone or is it the three network? I don't know. Don't know what it is. So we can't work out what it is, unfortunately. So still no joy there. And both three and um, Toyota, I have to say, have been extremely helpful on this. But we haven't been able to resolve the issue. So I think we're probably going to give up with that. We might have to give up that. Uh, Wendy says, sounds like a software problem. I wouldn't know, Wendy. Honestly, I wouldn't know. The thing is, I'm sure it worked at one point. Now, the boy did say, if it worked at one point, it possibly is something to do with an Apple update. It might be on the next update that it just starts working. So I've got fingers crossed. Whenever that is, we never know when that is. They, these updates just come out randomly, don't they? So maybe um, that will solve the problem at uh, some other point there, okay? So um, thank you. Uh, Lisa says, I have my own Slimming World journey. If anyone wants to look, I'll put my food on there. Lisa, do you want to um, just post your link on there? That's quite all right, my darling. Just post your link up there and um, that'll be fine. Anyone who wants to look at sl uh, Lisa's Slimming World um, uh, page, that should be coming up there as soon as she's posted it up there. All right, my darlings? Good. Um... Where did we get to? We got to three. So, oh, British gas. That's the other thing. British gas. As you know, I'm a landlord. And um, one of the properties I've got has got a boiler in there. And I've got this British gas contract thing. So that the, the tenant, anytime time something goes wrong, it's not have to ring me. It's just picks up the phone, rings up British gas. They come around and do that. Well, do you know what? They tried to put it up. Now, I understand. You know, everything goes up. Everything always goes up. You know, I expect everything to go up a bit. Where's the blooming thing gone now? What thing? Read it out to you. Is that it there? There it is. No, that's not it. There, oh, is that it? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So, I play. I pay monthly for this. I think about twenty-three pounds, something like that. Twenty-three pound, twenty pence. I think I pay. So here we go. Look at this. Your home care agreement runs out uh, because you pay by direct debit. It'll automatically renew unless you tell us you don't want us to do that. Right. Now you've got to watch out with this stuff. It goes the same for car insurance and lots of different things now. They automatically renew. You must keep an eye on all this stuff. Otherwise, you can be paying for something you don't want. Really, honestly. Especially car insurance. A lot of people trip up on this. Generally, car insurance now automatically renews. You've got to go online or ring them up just before... It's due to renew and say to them, I don't want this to renew. You should be looking around. Every time any sort of insurance comes out, you need to go online or start ringing around and finding who will give you the cheapest quote. Very, very rarely will the company that you're with renew at a reasonable amount. We all expect stuff to go up. And it's the same with this British gas home care thing. Look at this. So your previous price was... £278.52. That's for the year. But I used to play monthly. And it, was, it works at about £23 a month, something like that. Your renewal price, £350, £52, £67. And I looked at this, I thought, I don't fucking... Ooh. I don't think so. I did say think then. I did say think. I looked at it and I thought, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's like a rise of 26% in a year. Are you for real? So I looked around online and there are places so much cheaper than British gas. There really are. But of course, you know, you've got to change it all around and all that. So I rung them up. I rung them up. And I got, I got a massive discount. So instead of paying £23.20 a month. <laughs> oh, dear. Don't usually do that. Instead of paying £23.20 a month, it goes up to £23.40 a month. So I'm happy with that. Quite <laughs> frankly, frankly, I think they've made a bit of a mistake there. Because it's a stupid idiot. You know, I rung him up and I'm... Uh, when you when you ring up about these things, don't be namby-pamby about it. You've got to be quite forceful. And I said, well, I says, um, so that makes it about £29 a month. I'm not willing to pay that. I'll tell you what, I said, I'm paying £23.20 a month at the moment. I'm happy to pay you, with an increase, £26 a month. 
but it went up to £23. I don't, maybe it didn't hear me or not. So I'm really pleased with that. So you see, it just goes to show you, you must always, always ring them up when they ask that sort of thing, OK? Do never, ever accept the renewal price. Always question it. Otherwise, that would have cost me an extra 90 quid a year. It's n nothing goes up 90 quid like that in one go, except car insurance companies who have got you by the short and curlies, haven't they? You can never do, time do anything about those, I'm afraid. You've just got to keep paying it. But you will get it cheaper. You remember my car insurance? The renewal came through at something like £900. I did a price match on car insurance. The dearest one came, oddly enough, from Toyota. They wanted £1,400 a year to insure my car. Eventually, I went with the AA. £505 a year. You see the difference? It's enormous. It's absolutely enormous. You must always, always question these things. I just feel, you know, people like my Auntie Brenda. Um, she don't get it. She, she uh, and, and, you know, it's not because she's stupid or don't understand things, has got Alzheimer's. It's not, it's not because of that. It's just the way it is. You know, they haven't been brought up with computers, anyone sort of in their 60s or anyone, anything sort of over 60s. I'm not saying anyone's stupid. You're not stupid. You're just not brought up with it. You don't understand it. Even I don't understand a lot of it. Okay? But I know when I'm being ripped off and they put, people put the price up and they just go along with it. It's like she, she's never um, changed her gas and electricity suppliers. They don't get it. You know, when I say to oh, you know, you're paying too much. Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll stay with them. It's, it's easier to do it like that. And it's a bit like that all the time. You know, you, you can't really uh, help them like that. And I do feel badly for them because they don't get anything like that, you know. Wednesday, Wendy says, uh, I ring my car insurance company and ask them to match the last year's quote, bearing in mind it's been the same price for five years and they always match it because they want the business. That can be 60% less than what they quoted. I always stay with them because they always oblige. The price match never matches the price they accept. Oh, well, well done. Well done, Wendy. Yeah. I think I ring mine usually as well. I ring mine and I say... Uh, there, there was one occasion, actually. It was AXA... I never forget. Oh, just twisted my neck. It was AXA Insurance. OK? And um, I got my quote through. And it was much higher than I wanted. So I rung them up. Well, I'm afraid, no, we can't do anything with that. So, so I went on a price comparison white site. And I got a much cheaper price. Guess who with? AXA Insurance, the same people I was with already. So I rung them straight up. I said, well, I've just been online and I can get exactly the same insurance from you. Like 200 quid cheaper. Oh, yeah, but that's that's because it's online. I said, well, can't you just match that? No, what you'll have to do is <laughs> reapply online for that same insurance and you'll get it for that price. Well, can't you just push a few buttons? No, we can't do that. I mean, how stupid are they? Just <laughs> never, never accept it, all right? Uh, so I did that, rung up British Gas, sort that out. Saw the doctor yesterday and uh, uh, went to the chemist, got me spray, which has made me a little bit a little bit drowsy and tired. So I don't think I'm going to have one tomorrow. I'll go down to um, I'll go down to Boots, the chemist. or Actually, Audi do them. They do those antihistamine things. And I'll buy one in there. Is my throat any better? Um... Yes, it is a little bit better, I would say. Maybe I've got to have a few of them over the next few days and it might clear the fault. And then I might just stop taking them all together, really, and do that. Good. All right, then, boys and girls. Um, we're going to wrap up there, I think. We're going to disappear now because I'm getting quite hungry. It's time for my dinner. Now, we've got an awful lot of birthdays to do now, boys and girls, because I haven't been here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'm going to do all the birthdays in reverse order. In re it's like Miss World, isn't it? It's like Miss World on the show today. So birthday's in reverse order today. Happy birthday today to the lovely Chai. Hello, Chai. She's a wonderful, wonderful person who's been coming around to my um, karaoke uh, uh, things for years. I think that's Chai. Hang on a minute. Yes, it is Chai. I wonder where you, you haven't got a, a little, what's that called? Uh, picture, you know, front picture. What's that called now? 
front picture, um, profile picture. Happy birthday, Chai. It's her birthday day. Happy birthday, Chai. Happy birthday today to Stu Donnelly. Hello, Stu. 40 years old today. Gosh, it's been years since I saw you. Remember those wonderful times we had on alternative holidays with uh, Rest in Peace, Ian? Bless his heart. Happy birthday, Stu. Happy birthday to Stephanie Kenny. Also, it's her birthday day. 41 years old today. Happy birthday, Stephanie. And uh, yesterday's birthdays, boys and girls. Happy birthday on Wednesday, yesterday, to Ferdy Lashari. I love your name, Ferdy. Ferdy, happy birthday, Ferdy. To Gary Joins, who I used to work with at, uh, uh, at the uh, Rainbows nightclub up in Coventry. I worked with him there for about three years when I was doing some DJing there. Lovely chap. Happy birthday, Gary. And happy birthday yesterday for Jack Evans. That was Wednesday's birthdays. Um... Oh, I don't know if I can go back. Can I not go back further than that? Hang on a minute. Upcoming Sunday the 9th. Oh, hang on a minute. Ah, oh, yes. I think it'd be in calendar. So what am I looking for? The 5th. 5th was Wednesday, was it? What's today? Thursday? Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday's birthdays. Here we are. Tuesday's birthdays. Ah, Simon Holloway, who lives in Australia. He's a writer. Uh, he does some writing. He does music production. And uh, he used to DJ in London in a place called Reflex. Uh, I had the Reflex shop. And then when I left, I left there to go to the Black Cab on the Sunday night. So I think him and Ian took over there. So happy birthday to Simon for uh, Wednesday this week. I hope you had a nice, nice Tuesday, wasn't it? Tuesday. Happy birthday Tuesday to uh, Simon Holloway. All right, down in Australia. Uh, John Hunt. Happy birthday, John Hunt, for Tuesday. To Bradley Hall, 62 on Tuesday. Happy birthday. This is the Tuesday just gone. Happy birthday, Bradley. Happy birthday to Steve Keeble. Happy birthday, Steve, for Tuesday. Uh, Paul Heineken. Hello, Paul. Happy birthday to you for Tuesday. Danny Clements is 24 now. Happy birthday, Danny. Are you in the US now, Danny? I can't remember now. I think you might have moved to the US. Happy birthday for Tuesday. And uh, is that the one? And Herrick, but happy birthday on Tuesday to Eric D. Ferret. They're all the birthdays today. Let me sing to you, boys and girls. Sing along now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Three lots of birthdays there. All in one hit. Yes. There we go. That's it for the show tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I'm hoping to be with you as well uh, tomorrow morning. That's Friday morning. OK, I'm now going to go and have my dinner and watch a little bit of a telly. I've got a garden to water. It is so dry out there. Dry. More, more dry than my sense of humour tonight, I tell you. Have a nice Thursday evening. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now. <laughs>